back. Hi. Hello, welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfleckens. I am Dr. Glockenflecken, otherwise known as Will Flannery. I am Lady Glockenflecken, otherwise known as Kristen Flannery. My government name. It's your government mm-hmm. name, too. Yes, that's right. You were a wood. Yes, that was my maiden name. Wasn't it a big pain in the ass to change it, wasn't it? It, it was. It was not my favorite thing to have paperwork. to do. I almost didn't do it. I was back and forth of whether I was going to take your name or not, because, you know, yeah. modern womanhood but, but and then i couldn't take your name you wouldn't right. make me be will wood that was the thing we we discussed like philosophically <laughs> neither one of us had like oh yeah we weren't against the idea it was just yeah how it sounded was uh, a no-go i don't think we <laughs> yeah I don't think, and then we ended up just uh, making a third name for ourselves with glock and so right. you know it's, it all it all yeah. just worked out in the yeah. end ultimately i think what did it for me was was i wanted to have the same last name as my children and yeah. we also didn't we talked about hyphenating that also did not sound very good flannery wood or wood flannery, wood flannery. you know it just it, we didn't have flannery is a tough name it's hard to match <laughs> to yeah match with yeah. anything <laughs> that's right so i ended up, it was just the path of least resistance uh, yeah i suppose it was just um, take yours except for the paperwork that was a lot of resistance that's true yeah but you know it worked and, and guess what we're talking today yeah to uh, another, to married, another couple. married couple who makes mm-hmm. content. That's right. And specifically podcasts. Podcasting couple. We're talking to Dr. Sydney and Justin McElroy. That's right. I'm you Saw all know Bones, them from Spain. Sawbones. Yeah. Oh, so many people love. I, I mean, at first I wasn't I wasn't aware of Sawbones until like people started reaching out to me and be like, hey, you should, you know, check this out. Let's get get them on the podcast. Well, and I should point out, you're not aware of many things. Well, I, I, before I actually started, many people are aware of. I'm very limited in the 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 podcast. Yeah, you're not stuff so much a podcast guy, right? Aside from doing a podcast. <laughs> well, I, I make the, we do the podcast, but like I, I mean, I, I have to spend so much time with other social media platforms right. that like podcasting and or podcasts kind of go by the wayside for me a lot of the time. You times. do have a podcast that I hear you listen to a it's lot. It's sports. I, I yeah, listen to sports, sports podcasts, podcast. but um, uh, but but once I heard about them and checked them out. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. They're so good. And they really they've got are. like it's a whole stuff. Sawbones network. Like not all, no, no, no. They're no, not no. all called Sawbones, but their family has a like a they, the podcasting family network. Is on a podcasting network. They do not own a podcasting network, but they do have several podcasts on that network. So see, this is why Kristen fact she's like she's, <laughs> one thing that she needs to be here for is just to fact check me. Because sure I just say things. You just spout off. I just yeah. start talking and it may or may but not be true. You say it with confidence to the point that I think even you believe it. I, but... I try to be as accurate as possible. <laughs> but I, I do need Kristen here to help me. Uh, but no, it it's it, and so They've been they've been at the podcasting game for a lot longer yes, than me. Like ten years, eleven years. I just want to pick their brain and learn all about this business that we are learning about yeah. as we go. And they've been and in they've for remained a married decade. the whole time. So yeah. see, it's possible. Survived. Yeah. And uh, and are thriving. So it was really fun talking with them, hearing their perspective. Um, also, they're just hilarious. And they were just fun. like fun people to hang out with for an hour. Exactly. Very fun. So uh, maybe we shouldn't belabor this anymore. Let's let's just get get to it. it, All right. Here is Dr. Sidney and Justin McElroy. Today's episode is brought to you by the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience, or DAX for short. This AI-powered ambient technology helps physicians be more efficient and reduce clinical documentation burden. To learn more about how DAX Copilot can help reduce burnout and restore the joy of practicing medicine, stick around after the episode or visit nuance.com slash discover DAX. That's N-U-A-N-C-E dot com slash discover D-A-X. All right, here we are with uh, Dr. Sidney McElroy and Justin McElroy of Sawbones fame. Hi. Um, uh, and so... Is it a, a podcast network? Do you call yourself a network because you have like, like what fifty podcasts? Well, no, our yeah. So our family does a lot of shows that are on a podcast network called Maximum Fun, but we are it's it's a a family co op, a conglomerate. A, I know uh, you have your own company. We do have our own yeah. company. Yeah, we I had say to make you our do. Own. I guess it's we do. Yeah, you're you're part of the yeah, I'm part the, of the, the company. Yeah, we called the we had to start an LLC when my brothers yeah. and I host a, an advice show. And we've been doing this for, I don't know, 14 years, something like that, 13 years. And uh, 
what we called our LLC big giant head because it made us laugh. We never thought about how we'd have to go to banks one day and be like, yes, it's big giant head. Now you're stuck with it. The LLC right. that we made. Yeah. For, so 14 years, uh, were, you, were you like the first podcast? I mean, like that's, you were early in the game. Yeah, we, so we were, yeah. I'd love to hear like how you, how you got to this point. Okay, so the short version, on the podcast front, because the medical stuff is a much different Journey, yeah, I guess. We'll but like the podcast too. front, we my dad was in radio, who's a morning guy for 40 years. Uh, and we my brothers and I grew up doing like uh bits on his show. We do ads like when they needed a kid voice, like make sure to come to Buchanan Auto Mall where you'll find the best deal, you know. <laughs> so we did a lot of that kind of stuff. And uh, I hear kids have a lot of credibility. <clears throat> that's so true. That's, I, that's I, I turn to my exactly. kids when I want to know where to buy a car. Mm -hmm. Um yep. <laughs> so we I grew up in that and uh went to school for acting and directing and was working professionally as like a, a video game critic uh and reporter. I ended up oh. co-founding a video game site called polygon.com that uh is still going today, but I left there in 2018 because the podcast stuff started to grow. So my brothers and I, when my brothers moved to Cincinnati, I had already been doing a video game podcast. This was hot eight. I started doing the joystick podcast and then we started my brother, my brother, and me, because they moved uh, up to Cincinnati, actually, which about three hours from here. So as a way to keep in contact, we started recording My Brother, My Brother, and Me, which is an, an advice show where we just basically tell people how to live their lives. And So instead of just, like, calling <laughs> each other on the phone, sometimes you had to have, like, a podcast. Right. To and, uh, well, an, au an, audience, about. an audience, more, more <laughs> yes, specifically, right. right? The accountability of knowing we have to talk to each other. Uh, yeah, you know, at right. least once a week. Um, and you knew that you were all incredibly interesting people. Oh, fascinating! And like, yeah, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. People need to hear. People what deserve, we say. deserve even. I would deserve. Say. Yes. Great advice. Yeah, you know. great advice. So Sydney and I had had done a couple of different um, TV themed podcasts around about 2012. That would have started, uh, and those honestly, we just didn't have time to keep up with the TV. Uh, mm -hmm. well, you didn't, I probably could have found some way of no, watching you had time. lots of television. <laughs> and, uh, thanks dear. Um, and then, uh, so in 2013, we were talking about doing something medical, but we knew it didn't want to be necessarily get into like advice. Mm -hmm. So we were like, what's a way of like doing medicine that isn't advice since it had this passion for, for medical history. Um, and I have a passion for listening to Sydney talk about whatever she wants to talk about. So it, it was a great overlapping. She's very well passions. trained. Yeah. Um, I know. You say it just right now. So our, our yeah. it's a show about, how would you describe it, Sid? How would you describe Sawbones? Uh, well, I mean, I, I dig through medical history for, I mean, some of the obvious stuff that people, I think, kind of know about, like we used to use leeches all the time. What was that all about? Yeah. Uh, stories like that, that has come up a surprising number of times on this show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And that's I, I started digging for those kind of things and like, why did we do that? Why don't we or why do we still do those things? How do we use that now? What is the evolution of that diagnosis, treatment, sometimes figure in medical history? You know, what was this weird dude who did weird stuff for a while? And I research it and then just sort of tell Dustin the story and... Justin makes jokes. And it's wild from those like early ones that like a lot of people know about. I've just been like knocked over by how absolutely buck wild we have gotten throughout human history and how we try to treat things that we really don't understand. I mean, mm -hmm. Victorians yeah. were eating mummies to retain vitality. Mm -hmm. Like they would get chunks of mummy. Well, there are lots of things that that would cure. Yeah, but they did, would did eat it, mummies. Did it work? Um, did it work? Did it? No, no. actually, <laughs> no, that one. No, okay. no, that one will work. It wild. Yeah. Actually, that and we, and, but we ate all the mummies. So. We ate all the mummies. There's no They're more mummies. Done. We're done with mummies. If you oh, see man. a mummy, yeah. it's fake because the yeah. Victorians <laughs> ate all the real mummies. <laughs> Because when I think about vitality, yeah. I think I'm going to eat a dead thing. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, That'll help. You know, absor absorb its essence. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what, of, what, there, what was the reason? Got to eat something. It's, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's kind of evolved. Uh, I mean, round, I, well, round about COVID a little bit earlier than that, uh, when you saw TikTok, especially, I mean, it's like, I don't want to lay all the blame at TikTok's feet, but I think there's something about the the short form, like people who pop up on your feed who you have no idea if they're an expert or not, but they're suddenly tell you about how important it is that you expose your oh, man. perineum to the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, yes. and uh, we started doing a lot more like... Um, like modern pseudoscience kind of things, taking on stuff that it, they'll say is rooted in ancient beliefs or 
maybe is or isn't. And then where did they come up with that? Does it actually work? Who's selling you something to justify that? We started, and really that started before even COVID because of fluoride. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fluoride, I always oh, say man. like that was the yeah. turning point for us is we did an episode on why do we put fluoride in water? Where did that start? What, why? What's the point? And I was shocked at the number of emails we got from people who were like, oh, you've fallen into the conspiracy. Fluoride is uh-huh. a government mind control agent. And I had oh, no idea uh, that that... We had no idea that people like that were listening to our podcast. Well, that was one, yeah. And so we were yeah, like, let's sure. really clear the decks. Let's like get yeah. like, everybody off who wants to get off. If you're going to get like <laughs> some... some, some uh, if you're an anti-fluoride person, this is not the podcast for well, you. And then, and then the, that's right. when we got into the vaccine stuff, I think yeah, pretty heavenly, sure, heavily. Yeah. So we were like, well, okay, well, what else do we need to dispel as long as we have a platform to do it? Right. Exactly. Right. And the fluoride, I mean, I wish like we could have you talk to the entire state of Oregon because, <laughs> yep. you know, Oregon. We don't have it in our water here. Really? For, for exactly that reason that people are are concerned. I, I guess maybe it's conspiracy theories. I don't know what the reason that people have, but um, it's know. ridiculous. And and so. Yeah. Know. So we have to do like fluoride mouthwash and then mm-hmm. you go to the dentist and they will ask you if you, if you would like for them to put that fluoride nasty yeah, stuff yeah. on your teeth mm-hmm. for a nice little fee but anyway that's neither here nor there um America. the yeah tiktok is a a just a can be a cesspool for for pseudoscience and mm-hmm. i get it on the ophthalmology side as well there's like uh, you got people that that claim that glasses make your vision worse mm-hmm. right. like it's and that's a dangerous your th- eyes are being lazy they need to pull right. themselves up by their bootstraps <laughs> and stop accepting handouts yeah and, and people believe it and, and the thing is like people will just believe some anything they see on on social media so you talked about like whether or not they have the right credentials or any credentials whatsoever and it's so hard to tell mm-hmm. yeah. so it's it's very frustrating but i'm sure it's got given you a lot of topics to address on your podcast oh it so. definitely does we uh we try to i mean I, I look at TikTok anyway for fun. So it helps give me ideas like, uh-oh, yeah. okay, they're talking about this. We got to dispel that. And then our listeners send in. So, I mean, that's where I get most of my topics these days. We get tons of emails every day of like, you should talk about this. And a lot of it is just like, I have this. Tell me about it. <laughs> I just right. got diagnosed with uh-huh. this. Please share the history of also, it. So. This, this poor woman has absolutely sacrificed her algorithm in every regard, every, <laughs> yeah. every social media platform. <laughs> She has destroyed her algorithm. I look at some of the things that she has gets surfaced because she researches all these wild yeah. things and right. she's on another planet. There's another dimension. You're probably on like an FBI list right. somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure I am. I mean, it's really... I, I, FDA, <laughs> she's on an FDA list. Yeah. Now, I want did, to Google did your, stuff did like your... to debunk this. What is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did your, did your relationship predate medicine? So w- when did you guys mm. meet? Uh, a long yes yes we you, were okay so am i gonna share the story again and you're would, gonna get would, frustrated no go ahead just do the story <laughs> we've known each other <laughs> I think it's already frustrated we have so many of similar conversations <laughs> I, I swear all right <laughs> we we've known each other since uh we were 12 or 13 yeah. 12 i think yeah, i was 14 oh, years wow. and uh we did community theater together we still do to this day we direct and and our kids are in shows our families in shows really? and, and we're in shows still uh, but that's how we met. We dated as you do in middle school. Um, For whatever right. that means. Yeah. And, One time you held hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We talked on the phone to each uh, other while we watched Space Goes Coast to Coast. Yep. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and uh, then. Love that show. Justin broke my heart. He went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we Go do on. this here, but that's fine. Now, uh, it's the story. He <laughs> not, went, not he went not away not to. Not like, bye. I'm I'm out. <laughs> he went away to church camp for a week and didn't tell me. And so here I am calling oh. his home phone because landlines back then and nobody's answering and I don't know where he is. Yeah. And he ghosted me and I was broken hearted. And then he came back and tried to make excuses, but it was too late. He lost me. And then <laughs> I was an idiot. I don't know what to, I mean, like, I was but, 15 year old, 14 year old guy. I mean, I'm probably my, probably my dumbest. I mean, probably my dumbest, <laughs> like probably my dumbest mid twenties. Pretty dumb. Sure. Like early 20s, definitely might be a, a competition. That'd Which is when we reconnected. That's right. Exactly. We, we ran into each other uh, in college at a bar and picked called, up where we left called, off. Called uh, oh, wow. Bana- Banana Joe's Island Party was the name of that bar. Hey, Banana hey, Joe's hey Island sounds Party. like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> is Banana so Joe's Island camp. Party still there? Is it still around? No. Uh, Pineapple Tom's Peninsula Bash is doing great, but... <laughs> 
That's real. <laughs> that's that real. really did spring Somebody up right next, next door. door. Opened up another bar named Pineapple Tops. Oh it's my funny. god. <laughs> No. What college are we talking about here? What is where is this? Uh, uh, Marshall University here in Huntington, oh, West yeah, Virginia. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So so we started dating again. So church camp broke you up and a bar brought you there back we, together. There you go. That's life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what message we're sending, but there it is. But that was it's that was oh five. We got married. Uh, it was oh four that we we started dating again, got married in oh six. Mm-hmm. And then uh we've been been together been since together so we've been we've been so together I, twenty years this time. Mm-hmm. And, and, this time. <laughs> and Sydney, was it was it always medicine for you? Was that was that the path you were on pretty early on? Pretty much. I read the book The Hot Zone when I was twelve. <laughs> nice. And I I got really enamored with um hemorrhagic fevers initially. I was gonna pursue infectious disease. So I knew since I was pretty young, like yeah, yeah. medical school is for me. I, I will say that ending up in family medicine was not at first where I thought I would be. Um, but I loved everything in medical school. I wanted to do it all. Every rotation I wanted to do, I left everyone. I, I was like such a gunner because I left everyone going, this is my career. I love this the most. And like connecting with all of the professors. And then the next rotation, I would do the exact same thing. And at the end, I was you like- You would have hated Will. <laughs> Why? If you guys were in med school together. You were the, kind of the opposite. What, what do you mean? Well, she was like trying hard and learning things. I was, I was, <laughs> try, I, I was trying hard. I, I mean- Mostly. I don't think you ever went to class. No, I did go to class. Sometimes. I did go to class. I, it was a struggle at times. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I missed some of those metabolism lectures. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it was, that was rough. The yeah. Krebs, Krebs cycle and mm-hmm. all that. You stuff. don't really but, need that stuff. You yeah, know. you don't. You know, that's, that's a lot of fat. He, he preferred trained. to learn on his own. So he did a lot. I'm not saying he didn't learn it, but he he just had a different way he preferred I'm a, to do I'm it. a very, I am not a group project type of person. No, mm. so which, running a business together is fun. It's <laughs> Which is interesting to say that as where it's a four person little uh, you know group we got going on here. But, um, uh, but yeah, so, so it's, and so you decided what, what was it that, Cause you said you were on maybe infectious disease early mm-hmm. on. So what was it that kind of flipped for you um, toward family medicine? When, so I, part of it was just, I liked everything and I didn't want to give up any of it. I was like, well, I want to do all of these things that I've done rotations yeah. in and I don't want to narrow that focus. And then I did my family medicine rotation last. I worked in a rural family medicine office um, about 25 minutes from where we live. So not far. We, we don't, there's not really an urban center in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really exist. So I worked at a rural family doc office for two months and I just fell in love with it. The variety and the challenges, it was somewhat resource limited, which I already had an interest in that. And um, the doctor I worked with was just, he was brilliant. He was so easy to talk to. And like, he's also from West Virginia. So we're not really leaning into it right now, but our accents were similar. <laughs> he could get, you know, like he communicated with all his patients so well. He was just like a good old guy, local guy who knew how to help people, but also he knew everything. I just felt like he knew everything. And I was like, well, that's what I want to be. I want to, you know, communicate well, get along with everybody, but also secretly have this huge store of knowledge. And I just became really excited about family medicine. And also have a side focus on hemorrhagic fever, maybe. <laughs> Well, sort of, yeah. <laughs> little I, side business, little. I can't, little. Well, I got to pursue in my family medicine residency. I did the global health track, so I did. I did get to like go overseas oh, and do tropical yeah. medicine and take like the military tropical medicine course, and so I did get to pursue some of that stuff. You did like a month in Malawi, and then we actually moved together for a month to live in Honduras. <clears throat> oh wow! Where Sydney was doing uh, very important work, and I was. Blogging about video games from an <laughs> island paradise. I thought you were going to say sunning your perineum. So <laughs> that's better at least. It, we didn't know how important that was yet, Chris. And I, I was letting my perineum just, just, uh, I was about to Fall say rot. That dark. was a terrible image. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Ew. Tropical medicine. Yes. Rotting perineum. Did yeah. you meet Pineapple Tom no. while you were there? Yeah, right. Unfortunately, there. no. no. It, all, it all came together well, though, because I, now what I do um, I still do inpatient medicine with our family medicine service because I'm part of the academic medical service. Um, but primarily I work at a shelter for people experiencing homelessness. And uh, that's that's my day. I say job, but I don't get paid for it. So I don't know. It's still a job, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. that's what I spend most of my time doing. And I think resource limited setting medicine is very similar, whether we're talking rural or street medicine or global health. And so, so it's all come together nicely. 
I was I was going to ask what uh, Justin, what were you doing during all of this? But it sounds like you you had your hands busy with the video game. Yeah, stuff. I mean we, right? we've been doing the the we've continued to like ex- do other podcasts. Uh, my we've turned my brother, my brother, and me. We did a season of a TV show on a network called CISO that has since been discontinued. We do a uh, uh, role playing show called The Adventure Zone that we turned into a graphic novel. So it's a lot of that kind of entertainment type stuff um i haven't branched into medicine yet i feel pretty well versed uh you know right? 10 do, years do you I'm, feel well, like you have an honorary medical degree at this point you know when i say that out loud <laughs> it tends to draw some ire from you're in a safe place yeah. with me I uh, yeah but you're very far away and she is right next to me so i don't know how safe <laughs> my place is <laughs> Well, that's that was uh, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, what was your because I know what Kristen's perception of medical training and everything is. And it's it's hit or miss. You know, mm-hmm. what was at, what was your thought Did you process? know what you were getting? Did you know what you were getting into, into kind of, you, you know, you know, being married to medicine? It was tough for me. I, I'm generally like pretty good on my own. Right. Like it doesn't necessarily bother me to be right. on my own. What so that was not as much of an adjustment. I'm pretty self self sufficient as that goes. What is hard? It, what was hard, and what I was not ready for was watching her go through something that seemed like so outsized and so sort of like unbelievable in the amount of work and the amount of dedication that it took, and like trying to help her navigate that and not push herself too hard and still take care of herself while not really understanding for myself, like, if that was, like, to, to what extent I was right, you know, to what extent, like, she could afford to slow down a little bit from time to time. Like, it was really kind of just kind of going by gut, I mean, to, to try to help navigate that. I mean, and residency was was just as rough. I mean, I can't tell you, how, I have memories of, like, that first year, like, you crying with me and us, like, looking on, our phone. I what? was my in family medicine. We rotate through everything, and my uh, peds rotation right in the middle of RSV season. I remembered calling you in the middle of the night when I was on call in the hospital and saying, "What can I do with an MD that isn't practice like medicine?" I was googling what, on my phone. What, like, oh, what well, else can yeah. you do? Yeah. With I'm an stuck MD? with like, this degree. What am I going to do now? I I don't. You're like I can't. There's do this. a medical video game that we could really <laughs> right, use. Exactly. Some, some, yeah. 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 We got through that. Those are the we we talk about those now in residency as the crying times. You'll you'll get to the crying times. You'll get through them. It's okay. Ask for support when you get to the crying times. I could I couldn't. I thought a lot of it was made up at first. Like when she was like, and I'll be there for 30 hours. I'm like, well, 30 hours, but like how many of those do you come home and go to sleep? How many consecutive right? How many consecutive hours? Certainly not. Because like people talk about 40 hours, that's not in a row. I know that. So how is the third broken up? Well, I started out on our surgery rotation and I walked in the first day and they said, we forgot to tell you you're on call tonight. And I said, (laughs) oh my God. And they said, and also you're on call every other night for the first two weeks because we're down a few residents. So we'll try to even it out after the first two weeks of the month. Good luck. And I remember calling Justin like, (laughs) oh, what did I do? (laughs) Wow. Every other night is maybe the worst idea ever, mm-hmm. I mean, right? It, like, and when how the, do you yeah. adjust? Like, you can't get on daytime or nighttime when you're at every other night. Right. No. Well, time doesn't exist when, yeah. You're, yeah. when you're at that point. Yeah. Well, that was, when when, when, when did uh, work hour restrictions, like, because they, they revamped those. Mm-hmm. So I've, I went through my third year of residency um, was when they stopped the 28 or 30 hour calls either way. And yeah. switch to the, what was it, 18 hours for a while was the longest you could be in-house. Uh-huh. Uh, that was That's during right. my third year of residency. So my first, like, first and second year, I got full you didn't on. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> Not, everybody you were... lied about their work hours. Nobody was, you know, everybody was just living in the hospital. And then my third year is when they really started to crack down on that. I assume you've done an episode at one point about the, mm-hmm. what was the name of the guy that did uh, cocaine who, yeah. and... And basically set the Why standard. We never remember this guy's name. We talk about him all the time. He basically set the standard for for the physician work ethic. Is that Halstead? Halstead. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's the yeah. name of the guy. Yeah. Uh, we. And, I don't know if we've ever done one. Just we have mentioned him. Yeah, He's come should. up yeah. in many of our episodes, yeah. but I don't know if we've. Yeah. Done that would be kind a of an one. infamous guy. Yeah. For, yeah. You know, for for the medical field, and 
trying right. to undo some of the trauma. Residency that he hours <laughs> being set by somebody who was on cocaine. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, I'm so. glad. I'm kind of glad, y'all. Like I, I didn't. I'm. I'm glad I've learned since. I'm kind of glad I. I got a sweet. 30 years of my life before I realized that maybe the doctor who is seeing me has is like been awake for 28 hours right? straight. Like I know yeah, how I get after being thing. away for 18 hours. Yeah. It's not pretty. Like this, mm-hmm. right. and this cat's like diagnosed. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm kind of glad. I think ignorance was bliss in that exact mm-hmm. case. Yeah. That was one of the things I was always flabbergasted by. I was like, I do not want a doctor who has been awake for that long yeah. to be doing surgery on me. Yeah. I do not want a doctor who is sick to be leaning over me and like, you know, yeah, getting close to all my orifices. No, mm-hmm. thank you. I have a very vivid memory from my third year general surgery rotation of, of it was, we had been operating all night. We, as, as if I, I was doing my, my job standing in the corner, but, um, uh, the, the resident had been working all night and it was like five o'clock in the morning. She was trying to type up her op note and literally falling asleep. Like, it, mid-sentence mm-hmm. it's like this person was just like trying to like saving people's lives right. it's like I, it just totally outrageous you know what what people put themselves through it, and still do it and, really is i remember they i remember a nurse waking me up i was it was we were still doing paper charting when i first started residency and i was writing a note and i was sitting in a nurse's station i was way past hours and I was trying to finish a note and I had fallen asleep and I was just laying there asleep right there where everybody could see me at the nurse's station. And I still remember waking me up and saying, you can't do that out here. Go back there if you're going to do that. They can't see you do this. If you're going to do that. <laughs> if you're going to do that, go back there where they can't see you. It's unspeakable. <laughs> let's, um, let's take a short break and we'll come right back. Hey, everybody. Exciting announcement. Do you want to tell them or should I? Oh, you can. I'm so excited. Due to popular demand, we're adding more live shows in California. Sunday, March 10th, we'll be at the San Jose Improv. And on Sunday, March 24th, we're returning to the Irvine Improv to share our amazing story called Wife and Death. Yeah, we'll talk about that time you died. And came back to life. It'll be a tragicomic, multimedia, memoir, stage show extravaganza. You gotta check it out. To buy tickets, click the link in the description below, or you can go to glockenflecken.com slash live. We'll see See you you there. there. Kristen, are you familiar with AI? Yes, I have not been living under a rock. There are AI tools for everything now. That's right. Well, guess what? We have precision. This is the first ever EHR integrated infectious disease AI platform. This is super cool. For uh, any specific patient, it automatically highlights better antibiotic regimens. It empowers clinicians to save more lives while reducing burnout. It just makes their life easier. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And also antibiotic stewardship. Yeah. Really cool things. To see a demo of this, go to precision.com slash KKH. That's precision spelled with an X instead of an E. So P R X. C-I-S-I-O-N dot com slash K-K-H. All right, we're back with Dr. Sydney McElroy and Justin McElroy. Um, so you, you've been, you, you launched the Sawbones podcast together, you said 14 years ago, something like that. Uh, Sawbones, so the podcast was... Uh, it'll 20, be 11 years. It'll be 11 mm-hmm. years. This 11 year. years. What was the, the podcasting landscape at that point? point like were you mm. w- was this i guess were you bla- did you feel like you were blazing a, a new trail here and or were you and, only and talking this? to your mothers mm. yeah like what's it was those your only listener it was a lot yeah well i'll say luckily we had i had done a few shows before sawbones so we had some audience to like build off of um i think it was it was so much easier back then to like make noise with a podcast mm-hmm. like yeah to i you mm-hmm. used to be able to we would not tell people about a show and then we would wait and do it all in one push and say, okay, here's the show. Now everybody, you know, this is the moment to subscribe, subscribe right now. And if you did that, usually your first week for a lot of shows, you would be in the top 10 because it would be tracking new subscriptions, right? And you just went from zero to however many. So it'd be like, wow, this show's exploding. And then, you know, that was your, uh, chance to get out there and like try to make a, a dent and get people to hear you uh and i feel like e- now like more and more there is so much i feel like it would be so hard 
to rise above the den, especially now that like more celebrities and people who have like big engines of, mm -hmm. I mean, friggin' right. friggin' the day that I saw like Obama and Bruce Springsteen are doing a podcast, I'm like, <laughs> right. can we yeah. just calm down? <laughs> I'm doing my best with my limited resources of me being me. Like, please cut it out. Yeah. But it's yeah, a lot it's, harder to... Wait, it, to, is that Obama and Springsteen? Are they together? Is yeah. That a, that's like, a, do a show yes. together, Will. Like, really? Yeah. Yes. But you and me, we're fine. Let's, let's just keep doing our shows. I'm sure they'll be just as successful. Yeah. And yeah. Well, right. It's really not Obama fair. the Obama-Springsteen show. It's not <laughs> yeah. fair. Oh, man. Yeah. And, like, Different Conan. Level. Conan had Conan, lunch. At, yeah. yeah, you're right. Like, they're in, in, in the... One thing I... I, I watch a lot of sports content. Like it's like my kind of separate from medicine. And now like there's, there's so many like athletes, everybody's, everybody has a podcast now. Yeah. And so like how, yeah. yeah, you're right. How do you rise above that? I'm sure it helped to get in early. Sure. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think getting in yeah. early and, and finding a niche at that moment, that was the other thing. That's was one thing like, that hasn't changed, I think. Yeah, we looked around and there were there were a lot of trivia. I think trivia is always popular. People like to hear things mm -hmm. and then they can tell stories at parties and like win right. bar trivia and stuff like that. And so I think something trivia caught on early and then nobody at the moment was doing medical history mm -hmm. sort of trivia was the way we thought about it at first. It evolved into something that was more like storytelling. But initially it was really just like, here's fun facts fired at you and it's, you know, silly and funny, quirky, done. We were definitely inspired by like stuff you should know, um, has a, had a uh -huh. similar sort of structure, that idea of like one person's the expert, one person's the the listener. I think our bold innovation right. was what if one per the same person's always the expert and the other <laughs> right. person is just kind of there. Uh, <laughs> so that was our, that, but it, it, I think that has helped. And that's still the thing that I tell people who are, who are thinking about, um, uh, doing a podcast in, 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 uh, my podcasting book, everyone has a podcast except you, a commercial failure, but a critical <laughs> ignore, a critically ignored commercial failure. Still very proud uh, that, that we tell you like it. You, hey, you did it. You, you wrote did a it. book. It's out there. You, did it. you can buy it. Maybe not in a store, but like if you dig around on Etsy or something. So if you, uh, <laughs> on Etsy. On Etsy, you are handmaking, Etsy they're printing, printing out copies and selling them illegally. Somebody <laughs> embroidered it and <laughs> sells it on Etsy. The whole text. I yeah. spent my life. Copy just um, for you. No, but I said like your po your podcast has to be like be able to in a sentence tell what it is and why it's different from other podcasts. And there are still that has not changed. There are so many shows released where I look at it I'm like I don't know what this show is. Like it's people talking and they enjoy each other's company. I think that's great. But it, it I think unless you have a bit more specificity these days, like it's really hard to get across without a killer mm -hmm. pitch. Yeah, right. Killer log line. What about working together? as as married people mm -hmm. is that was that was that challenging to figure out the dynamic the or was it pretty did you guys all you know have always kind of been okay i think overall i mean overall it's good we we excel when we're working on projects and problem solving together i, th I feel like as a couple that's when we're at our best mm -hmm. um yeah. and so i think like creating the show together and then we published a book based on the show and making that together um that is has strengthened our relationship. I think that's been good for us as for a sure. couple. Yeah. Sometimes, like, since I'm the one who does the bulk of, like, the work for the show because I do all the research, I think sometimes that that can be stressful where Justin's like, listen, I know it's been a busy week or, like, it's we've had a bunch yeah. of snow days and you haven't had all the time you normally have, but we really need to get this out. So sometimes that can be stressful. But It is, it is tough to mm -hmm. sometimes have to be, and you do this for me sometimes, where it's like, you know, there are many days, especially if you have kids or there was a pandemic where you're like, I can't, I don't have this in me today. And it's tough to right. be the other person who's like, we have to, like, it's not, it's right. not, you know, one of you has to be the heavy and, and or you're just constantly letting each other off the hook all the time, which right. can be nice, but it doesn't get food on the t yeah. table, you know? Right. But uh, I think maybe your audience would appreciate maybe having uh, Justin research a medical uh, Well, you just topic. did. The and, and just, Dr. Just Brands. See what he can do. That's it. No, I their do. most recent episode is Dr. Brands, where he did that. And by the way, you started with Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I grew up in Dublin, Doc. Sorry, Dublin, Texas. Oh, okay. Have you been in the museum? The old Doc Soda Shop. Yes. My, she my there. No, wow. you always say that. It was my younger brother oh, okay. worked oh. there. That's but so yeah, cool. it was just it's a huge part of the culture of that town. It was like two places to work in that town. Exactly. So yeah, that. And then we had a Miss. 
what was it? Pretty Peggy Pepper contest okay. every year. It was like really? a beauty pageant. Oh, that's fantastic. And there was a billboard where Peggy Pepper like swung on a swing, like it moved and yeah, everything. That is, that's really cool. I love, I love Dr. Pepper. That was part of why Justin started with that. I've been obsessed yeah. with Dr. Pepper since I was a little kid. And I always tell this story. I was, I was having my eyes examined once and oh. the doctor leaned back and said, uh, you must like Dr. Pepper. Oh. And I said, Yes. And he said, I can tell by looking in your eyes. And I had to assume that was not true, but I've never figured out how he knew. <laughs> to that, is, that, for her. that is, unless you had like rip roaring, like diabetic retinopathy. <laughs> which, but it's like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> which I did yeah. not. Please, Sydney, this is obviously a trade secret. Will is not going to reveal that here, how they know what <laughs> soda you like. I've never figured out how he, he was dead on. Never. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> was this a uh, misguided attempt at hitting on you? <laughs> I, I hope not. I was, oh, man. Like, I was young, so I hope not. Like oh, yeah. middle school oh, okay. years. Yeah. Okay, too yeah. young, too yeah. young. Uh, uh, no, uh, that's <laughs> it's nothing. That's, uh, no, that's, that's nothing. nothing. <laughs> that I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's very strange. Very... I will research some. I the only ones I will sometimes research episodes about uh, medical marketing because I think brands yeah. are fascinating. Like I did an episode Me about too. like Nyquil, and I did some on um, I think like Tylenol stuff like that. I just think that it's that it's. There is a really wild number of medications on the shelves, like right now, that you go and like some of them are new, right? It's wild that we have a section in drugstores that's like label, like my Walmart has a homeopathy section, and it's like right. that they don't just label oh, like yeah. fake, <laughs> right. fake medicine here does not work. Like don't use <laughs> sugar doesn't pills. do anything. Don't right. use, and it's wild that we have that. But then we also have these other like medications that we've had for a really long time that like. We're just all going to kind of pretend they do stuff. And we all know that, <laughs> that they mm -hmm. don't actually do. It's a patent medicine that we've just kind of kicked around for, for so long. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with I get asked so many questions about eye drops because there's a thousand mm -hmm. different eye drops and which eye drops should use. And there's the homeopathic ones that pe patients come in to see me with. It, it just it's tap water. That's It's like yeah. you know, tap water with with concentrations of these random extracts of things that are in such small concentrations that there's no way it's doing anything mm -hmm. is it causing infections though i i, I mean <laughs> there's sounds... there's been a lot of reports in the news about people yeah. getting eye infections from over-the-counter eye drops Sid yes. felt very Sid felt very vindicated when recently everyone found out that cold medicine doesn't do anything <laughs> like she has been banging that Just drum for many yes. years like yeah you can take yeah. it it won't do anything for you but go for it and i'm like really but it's supposed to <laughs> It says it has a picture of the nose right on the box. Are you sure? <laughs> Nothing. <Right. laughs> nope. Did you get some? What about pseudofedrin? Or what is it? Pseudo pseudofedrin? They didn't yeah. disprove that. I think it was just the okay. phenylephrine. You just was can't get any more because people were making meth out of it, so it's hard well, to yeah. get. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I used to yeah. that used to work, and then mm -hmm. they stopped selling it, or at least I thought it worked. Whether it was a placebo effect or not, who knows? But I did notice mm -hmm. that when they changed it, I was like, this just isn't doing it for me. Yeah, phenylephrine does dilate your eye a little bit. Does it? If you so give you it go. in the form of an eye drop, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, do you get do you, do you get a lot of pushback from some of the topics that you've 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 uh, you've addressed and some angry emails and messages and like how do you how do you deal with that? We do we do sometimes. I would say um, not as much these days because I think people kind of figured out the perspective like where we're coming from a while ago. And I don't know, our, our podcast is free. So I always say like, if you, if you really don't like it, you can just not listen. Not. <laughs> you right. Right. It doesn't cost you lots anything either way. There's lots of podcasts. Um, and so I Have think you heard about the one with Obama. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> there are much, much more famous people on podcasts than us. Um, but I, so not as much these days, still occasionally. Um, I would say that the real, like, kind of hardcore anti-science people aren't listening anymore if they ever were. Yeah. Um, there was really a turning point, I think, when we started talking about vaccines. We started um, with a very, I think, very innocently, like encouraging people to get a yearly flu shot, something like that, that mm -hmm. we didn't think would be the most controversial in the world. Um, and then got a lot of pushback from that. We did one on sort of the public health history of gun safety. And mm -hmm. that, 
I, which I should have expected. We live in West Virginia. I should have expected. I was going to say, The yeah. pushback. Um, but I was caught off guard by some of that. There, there's a lot of, also, I think when you talk about the medical system, like, I feel like when we talk about, uh, this is definitely like 2016 to 2020, about that range, when you would talk about the problems with the system that we have in the country, mm -hmm. it can feel like, like if you're talking honestly about a broken system, it's going to feel like an attack, right? Because it's broken. <laughs> it doesn't, right. it doesn't right. work. So like, there's a lot of, I think sometimes just re saying w what the situation is, I think a lot of people uh, uh, got defensive. Like it, it felt like. It did. And I, I, w I was hoping to cushion that by I'm part of that system. And so I feel mm -hmm. like I'm being self-critical. I'm trying to be, you know, thoughtful about what I am also a piece of. Um, but like we, we did, we've done episodes on like medical racism and people just get really defensive when you kind of call those things out and acknowledge these sort of systemic problems. You're to, all, they're, they're very quick to say, but not me. And it, mm -hmm. I, I understand maybe not you, but that doesn't, you know, it's deny its existence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You also have people who are living in a, who grew up living in a system where medicine is a commercial product that mm -hmm. people can afford or not afford and not a human right. And I think if you don't believe that healthcare is a human right, you are probably not going to jive with our perspective most of the time. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be on board. Right. How did you get how did you get there from spending your whole lives in West Virginia and attending church camp? Because I also <laughs> attended church camp and grew up in rural Texas. Killer, and... killer question. Killer question. It's all Sydney. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I you know what? Honestly, part of it is we were really fortunate. This is just from my perspective, because I would love to hear yours, but like when we we are we were a lot stupider, my brothers and I, when we started doing my brother, my brother and me, because we were, you know, doing a lot of like dumb fratty kinds of humor that like, you know, lowest common denominator type stuff. And you, and when you realize that you're talking to people who have a, a real wide range of backgrounds and experiences and you start hearing from them like, hey, this sucks. Like, it sucks what you said. It, it sucks that you're not uh, educated about this, this lifestyle or whatever and you're ragging on it. Uh, and I'm a listener. Like, I'm a fan. And when you guys like made fun of like furries, for example, or whatever, like it hurt, it sucked. And it's like, wow, you, you start to think more about anybody could be listening to this. And maybe I want to talk in a way that like doesn't hurt anybody or at least hurts people as least amount as possible. So that was like my personal, I guess, sort of like journey. I don't know how you're... We were, well, I was raised a little more radicalized yeah. <laughs> than you were, I would say. That was, I mean, that was kind of the perspective I was already coming from. Um, I'd done a lot of traveling with the global health track. And that I think gives you a different perspective. I think that helps broaden your, yeah. your view. And then I think living in a state like West Virginia, where, um, the rights of, you know, marginalized groups, oppressed groups have been under attack for a while here. I, I think that actually just, I mean, it pushed me further in the other direction. I mean, I've, we've had to actively speak out and fight against that here constantly, we're still doing it. Our legislature's in session right now. And there's all kinds of horrible things that would restrict my practice and the rights of the people I care about. And so I think- Sydney spends a lot of time calling um, the uh, our state representatives uh, and uh, mm -hmm. haranguing them. The, uh, well, several made the mistake of giving me their cell phone. So that's on them. That's oh, on them. Man. Yeah, that's their fault. Yeah, They're going to hear from yeah. them. <laughs> what did they expect? Yeah. <laughs> well, you 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 did. I, I wanted to ask actually about your, your venture into politics. Mm -hmm. um, if if that's okay, sure. I don't know if it's a sore subject no. uh, at all. But <laughs> that was but, a group yeah, project because, too. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. And so when when was it you ran for? Was it the the state house? Mm -hmm. It was in West Virginia. In we West... have a House of Delegates, which I think most places it's an assembly. Okay. Ours is the House of Delegates. Uh, I ran. Is that year before last? Yes, twenty twenty two. All blending together now. All yes, even I ran in twenty twenty two for our local house seat. Um, against the incumbent who was also a physician. So I felt like, I don't know, I felt like it was a more even ground, but um, I was unsuccessful. It was a lot of learning though. I, I mean, I, sure. I don't regret the experience. I met a lot of people and got to have conversations with a lot of people that I wouldn't have otherwise. And Sydney was really one of those politicians that you like wish would run where she really didn't necessarily want to do it, but she wanted right. to, she felt like it a needed to survey. be done. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought I would be good yeah. at the job. I knew I wasn't right. good at getting it. 
I like I, I kept saying that like I'm <laughs> bad at yeah. getting yeah. this job, but if I could get it, I would be good at doing it. And that is not nobody buys that sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So. Well, do you have any advice then from what you learned on like for other physicians who may feel the same way, you know, and, and I don't think anybody becomes a, a doctor thinking I'm going to be a politician one day, mm-hmm. but it has become more and more important, I think, for physicians to have a voice in legislature. So absolutely. Have you learned anything that might be useful for people who who are in your shoes? <laughs> yeah, no, I think for sure. I, I mean, one, the the more open I was to. um listening to people I didn't agree with. Uh, that was something that I, I didn't come into it. I mean, I think especially as a physician, sometimes you get in this mindset, like you're in so many interactions where you know better, I guess you're, you're supposed to be the one in the room telling somebody else like what to do or what the solution is, or I've got the answer for you. It, it's sometimes hard to break out of that and be like, well, maybe I don't. And especially when you're hearing somebody who you really disagree with, to kind of keep that line of communication open and facilitate that is, was a very challenging. I got better at it as time went on. Um, Still some room to grow. I mean, I'm not, I'm <laughs> we all could. Just listening to people who you don't agree with and just hearing them out and not always thinking that you're like, and maybe live in your right, house. Just like really changing, <laughs> yeah. changing your mind. Yeah. Well, I, I have a question. Was, was Justin a benefit or a detriment to your, your, <laughs> to your efforts, campaign. your campaign efforts yes, here? Yes, Sydney, go on. You, he was a definite benefit. He was my, you were my campaign manager. He, yeah, he, I did all the website, all the social mm-hmm. media stuff. Well, we, oh, we had uh, yeah. help with that, with the social media aspect. Well, I was the, the campaign man. Yeah, guys, <laughs> when I was in college... <laughs> I once overdrafted a credit card buying a bag of Doritos. Right? Yeah, yeah. I got oh. charged thirty five dollars overdraft fee for a bag of Doritos. Then Cindy put me in a job where if I mess it up bad enough, I will go to real prison, like real actual <laughs> prison, if I do the money bad enough in this job. And Cindy's maybe like, that I know was intentional. Perfect. Yeah, I know yeah. <laughs> maybe she would like for you to, <laughs> yeah, she's trying to take a little vacation. <laughs> that is a that is a long way around. That was my plan. <laughs> was there was there any muckraking going on? Like, because because I feel like if I tried to run for public office, they yeah. would go back into my tweets from like 2017 Oof. and and like hold it against me. Like what? Well, let let me tell you. Um, I had already because not because of politics, but because we we have done a podcast for a very long time. It's good to occasionally go back through your social media and <laughs> just nuke just, it from uh, orbit. Just check that out. <laughs> Um, cause Scrub we're, we're all growing and learning. Um, yes, no, the only, there was one piece of, um, oh my God, it was great negative guys. advertising that came out about me. Cause I didn't, I didn't ever go negative on my opponent. Yeah. I just talked about me. Um, and I will say this didn't come from my opponent. It came from a third party from like a pack. <laughs> it was, yeah. There was a oh. picture of like Sydney and Joe Biden on this flyer. And it's like, the McElroy Biden agenda. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there is a piece of mail. Delivered to our home. Yeah, d- that was delivered to my home. About my radical socialist agenda <laughs> that I had with Joe Biden. Um, oh, boy. And like, it's always hard to... And you're it, like, not, Joe Biden's nowhere near radical enough for me. You <laughs> yeah, don't even know that. Like, I'm, way, I'm way away from... No, but like, I make this guy look like George Will. It was great, though, because <laughs> everything on it, I'm like, I'm for all... Yes, this is me. Yeah. This <laughs> is actually... I 100% support this attack ad. <laughs> this is dead yeah. on. Oh, man. It was great. How, how, how close was it? Um, The election. I don't know. And it was, you know... Was, 45, 55, something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. it's honestly yeah. like uh, what you realize is that you don't have any data. Like you have some data about how people have voted in the past, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's really hard to guess how people are uh, like, mm-hmm. who's going to come out, who, who's all that stuff. So I don't know mm-hmm. that uh, I felt like we, we, we worked really hard at, we tried we really knocked hard. On so, we, we went really like boots to the ground. I knocked on so many doors personally. And then we had a team of volunteers that went out and knocked on doors with us. So like I went to people's houses and tried to talk to them as much as possible. And I don't know. I mean, I think if it were something I was going, I'm not going to run again. It was a, it was an experience. I'm glad I did it. I think I'm good on that. Um, but I feel like we could have knowing how to do it. Maybe if we went at it a couple more times, maybe we could win, which I think is like the attitude you're supposed to have. I mean, that was all the people who who gave me advice, who had like been in that sphere and knew that kept saying, you don't expect to win the first time out. If you do great, but you got to do it again and again, and you're going to build that reputation and then you're going to win. And we just, 
I don't think we had it in us as a family. We got a lot of things to sure. keep doing that. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. but I, I I commend you for putting yourself out there like that. Like that's that takes a lot of guts and yeah. and we we've talked about this on this show. Like we we need more people, more medical professionals. Not me. Okay. I'm not gonna run. <laughs> for now i might uh, i don't know no. we'll, i mean you know we're in oregon i think i might have a little bit better shot <laughs> yeah yeah uh out here but uh, you know sure. uh, we, we do uh, need, we need more with your radical pro fluoride agenda it's hard to that's say yeah, right. it's, that's the yeah. if i focus on that like pro, let's get the fluoride in the water like i feel like that could be my legacy i'm a sing- the fluoride I'm the rare guy. single uh. issue candidate and my uh, one yes. thing is <laughs> fluoride. Uh, two, it's going to be fluoride and then uh, eliminating visine from the face uh, of the earth. Yes. That's that's oh, going to be. You're going to get so much pushback on that. <laughs> yep. All the all the pot smoking teenagers. Then none of them are going to vote for me. Mm-hmm. But anyway. well, you know, I think it's doing what it's meant to for them. Yeah, that's Worcester true. That's, I do have a caveat. That is the yeah. one. Those the, the one group of people that I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. That Go makes ahead. sense. If yeah. you need to, that's fine. <laughs> Just once or twice. That's okay. All right. Well, before we wrap up, I do have I, I we've got to do this. This is a, a little game that we've devised um, because you mentioned scrubbing, going back through your old social media, your old content. Well, well, we have we're going to do a limerick challenge here. OK, so this is blatantly ripped off from uh, NPR. Okay. Um, uh, the wait, 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 don't tell me. Uh, so these are limericks that are connected to the last season of your podcast. Oh, my gosh. OK. Yeah. And so I've never listened final... to our podcast, so I'm at a, di- a disadvantage. <laughs> the final word or phrase of each of these limericks has been left out. Okay. So your goal is to complete the limerick okay. correctly. OK, we got three of these because that's that's the extent of our creativity. All right. So here we go. In the woods that I roam for a retreat lies a tale that's both strange and bleak. Grilling was my game. A tick bite is to blame. Now I can no longer eat blank. When? Meat. Meat. Red meat. Red meat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Yay. That's good. That's a and wild that's talking one. about the that- gal alpha. Uh, right uh-huh. that's what it's called the alpha okay, gal yeah. yeah alpha gal that's it that was, what is alpha tell 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 the people what alpha gal is uh basically you can get bitten by a tick and then develop an allergy to eating red meat after that which sounds like which sucks to hear as somebody who spends a lot of time trying to combat misinformation when you hear one that like sounds right. absolutely fake 100 <laughs> percent. Right. right my gut is it's way real. off it on does that sound one. fake yeah is it an enzyme what is what is alpha gal yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like a like an, an antibody enzyme. reaction that yeah. basically, you're, yeah, it's cross reactive with one of the proteins in red meat, and so, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's terrifying. That's it terrifying. is. Yeah. It is. All right. Here's the next one. <clears throat> Will thinks that's terrifying. This is a guy that got cancer in both of his balls against <laughs> modern medical. And then his heart. Uh, and then his heart yeah. stopped. And he's but, like, but, but no, tick. keep the ticks yeah. away from me. <laughs> no, I love yeah. red meat too much. That's what really keeps me up at night. If I, if I get an allergy to red meat, I'm just walking off into the forest and you're never going to see me again. That'll be That's what it's done. That's I'm going to stop eating done. red meat. Nothing could kill me. I'm unstoppable. That'll be it. <laughs> All right. There once was a man named Gene with an infection described as quite mean. It's far from my ear. It's over by your rear. This is a case of... Fournier's gangrene. That's right. Yes. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. I was so close. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, it's off. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell us, to give us a, give us the one liner on Fournier's gangrene. <laughs> it's, uh, it's gangrene primarily of the perineum. So I don't know. Does every, would everybody listening know what a perineum is? Well, they do after this episode. We've talked <laughs> yeah, about it so many times. I'm, ex- I'm excited to hear you describe the perineum. I used though. to have so, a taint tanning please. button on my. <laughs> you, We've talked about it taint. already. That a bad Ta- word? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Can we say it? Ta- we can. We can term believe it if the, we have that's to. That's not a bad word. It's just it's a it's a like a colloquial term it's for like, the perineum, like, yeah. much like the the gooch. No, don't. <laughs> it's just it's a, it's a colloquial term for the <laughs> tank. Tank comes from because it's so it's the area between <laughs> the the front and the back. So it tank yeah. this and it tank that. So it yeah right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Is that where it comes from? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. And 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 gain, So it's it's gangrene, which is like. Developing. No, I meant the word. I was. Tank- I, that oh, was an what, etymological yeah. question, yeah, yeah. not a medical I think that's one. What it's, yeah. that's I, I, I think so. And that's it is. I don't know. I, Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. 
It's 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 a uh, it's official. That's what it is. So and you so, get gangrene right there. Have yeah. they tried sunning it to see if that would make <laughs> it go have, away? Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> it, it wouldn't hurt. By that point, once you've had have the gangrene, there's it's anyway. So it's it's yeah. a, is that it's, what you were talking about with the video games? You just had a yeah, rotting, rotting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh. A little fourniers there. <laughs> they had fourniers, so. yeah. Oh, that's why you yeah you just gotta you know just pay attention to what's going on down there just in general yeah. you know just yeah check wanna, it out everyone you want to be aware well that right? came from there was that there, one of the new diabetic medications that was warning that like also yeah. this could be a complication and it's like what wait what <laughs> <laughs> you, you get I'd get an infection where and why. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Well, and can you imagine having your name attached to that? Yeah. yeah. Like that's things. your life's legacy. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. The, for, the doc, did you be Dr. Fournier? Yeah. yeah. I think about that's, that a lot while we're doing our show. Like right? you never quite know when history's lens is looking at you. Like <laughs> right. Max yeah. von uh, Pettenkoffer was a guy who uh, wanted to research. Uh, he wanted to prove that cholera was contagious. Wanted to prove that cholera was contagious. So oh, he yeah. Drank diarrhea. Drank diarrhea. Right. Oh my god. And goodness. that's that is a dedication to science that I do not have. And that's oh, his yeah. moment though, right? Like yeah, when we write his yeah. name in the history books, like when we turn our, the lens of history to backs like that, he probably thought it would have been many other things. Certainly this isn't what I'll be known for. Bottoms up. You know, it's like uh, it's rough. But literally. He, but he shall never be forgotten. That's no. true. That's that's, that's, right. that's that's right. Except I just heard about it. So I don't know. Maybe. It is up to you to make sure people are reminded of yeah, it. You won't forget that now. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then he had to have cholera. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Well, yeah. After that's that. True. Yeah. That's true. Um, all right. Last one. As a human, this might be your bane. It's nothing you want to contain. A roundworm was found, alive and writhing around, a rare carpet python parasite in the brain. Brain. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! The brain, not a not a great place to get a parasite. No, That's, carpet yeah. python mm -hmm. parasite. Like none of that makes yeah. me want to. It was a bad thing to hear about. Kristen, I'll be honest. I, it was yeah. a bad thing to well, hear about. I had just because she got it from foraging near where a carpet python had pooped. So she foraged oh. some greens, and there was carpet python poop and parasites on them, and that's how she got it. And as somebody Stand who had just kids. like, Stand I had just strayed That's onto right. the foraging part of TikTok recently. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, boy. The foraging part of, there's a, there's a part for everything. Yeah. Have you, talk. Justin, had to establish some boundaries in your household of, uh, you know, especially during training, like medical textbooks uh, laying around? Well, I, here's what I, uh, <laughs> if I hear Sydney get a text message and then I hear her go, oh, uh -huh. And then oh, I yeah. hear her say, come look at this. I'll say, no, <laughs> no thank you. I won't be doing that. Thank you very much. Yeah. I won't Sounds be. about right. She'll I sometimes to, like, just stealth know. do it. Just like out of nowhere. I'm like, whoa, you gotta, I gotta be on an itchy trigger finger. Get, get ready to turn around. <laughs> I now know not to look through his photos. Yeah. Like so, there have been times mm -hmm. where I was like, hey, where's that cute picture of the kids that you took? And I'm like scrolling through and then I'm like, oh my God. Yep. Yeah. There's like some eyeball it's like an with open a huge infection or, or yeah. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, making talks. You gotta, gotta, gotta educate the people. Yeah. I understand <laughs> well, that. Thank you guys. <laughs> you, got, you did great. That was, uh, you, you nailed those limericks. That's well, good. Sydney did. Well, I'm Sydney not did. sure. Well, what yeah, I, right. I shouldn't be congratulating you, Justin. Right. You, didn't, you didn't do anything. Hey, listen, I'm so used to drifting off my wife's success at this point. I barely <laughs> notice anymore. <laughs> Well, uh, tell us what, what, what anything you want to plug, talk about. Uh, what do you want the people to know? You can uh, you can listen to our show called Sawbones. If you know how to find this podcast, you know how to find every podcast. So just find that podcast the same way. That's right. <laughs> uh, we have the Sawbones book. Uh, we did a new edition in a paperback edition in 2020, the late 2020 that has a, a lot of like pandemic updates and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Stuff about quarantine, things like that. So it's, and it's all illustrated by my brother. Yeah. yeah. So that was oh, a, that cool. was a cool cool uh project you can buy that and then we have new episodes of sawbones every tuesday um and we do we don't have any live shows on the books right now sometimes we'll we'll tour out but that's that's the bulk of it i mean that's, nice. that's the main thing and then um and you're on social media like, yeah. at, at the mcelroy uh, family i mean yeah we have the, the mcelroy family i'm not much on the yeah. individual sites not, anymore yeah. probably a good thing yeah. it's 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 a big time you know it's a time investment mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So you got you got a good thing going on. But I know a lot of our listeners it, for a long time they've been like you, know, you got to get sawbones. You got to get sawbones yeah. coming on here. And so we're so glad we were able to to do it this so uh, with you guys. So yeah. Fun. yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Hey Kristen. 
What's that? Name something that's like crusty and flaky. Mm, a delicious croissant. I appreciate your optimism. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I was thinking? What? Demodex blepharitis. That is not as delicious. <laughs> Do you know what these little guys are? What? These are Demodex mites. Yeah. That's not They're cute fun. though, aren't they? Those ones They're are cute. cute. If you have red, itchy, irritated eyelids, you might be surprised to find out that it's a disease called Demodex blepharitis mm. caused by these little guys, Demodex mites. Do you ever see those in your clinic? Yeah, occasionally. It's not It's not uncommon. Are they that cute when you see them under the microscope? Not quite. Mm. All right, but That's you can make bad. an appointment with your eye doctor and get an eyelid exam where they can help you know for sure if what you're suffering from is Demodex blepharitis. To find out more, go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's E-Y-E-L-I-D check.com to get more information about Demodex blepharitis and these little guys, Demodex mites. That was a lot of fun. They're so fun. And we have like a freaky amount of things in common. Do you think we could do this for another 10 years? 10 years. Wow. It's it's so it's really impressive. It that, really is. I was just to, thinking, would anyone still be listening in 10 years? <laughs> like, are we? I don't it's know a, if we're that interesting. It's uh it's it's really cool to see what they've built and like yeah. a lot, a lot of you wanted to hear uh yeah. from lots um, of emails the, and comments and things to have them on. So we were really excited well, to be able to do that. What family members could we get to like be on podcast with us? That is the maybe the more impressive thing, right? Like <laughs> Yeah, they must all Not really like each other. Not only do they work with their spouse, but they work with their siblings, their yeah, parents. That's yeah. cool. That's um, I don't know how they do that. We could. I think my mom. Yeah. Could, could do podcasting. Yeah. Um That's the one that jumps out. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. The, she's the only one. She's just very gregarious. Who and, likes to talk enough? Right. Yeah, like, that's the thing. We're she's, we're from very quiet families, both of us, except for true. your mother. So that's true. But anyway. Um, that was, that was great. So let's, let's do a fan story. Should we? Yeah. All right. So here we go. This is from Mary. She says, I am an NP and was introduced to your videos with the hair cutting video early on in the pandemic. Wow. Wow. That's deep a cut. deep cut. Yeah. Yeah. So I, before I even started making, like, I think the first video I ever made, like right when the pandemic happened, I couldn't go get no, a haircut. This was a live that you did. It was a, that's right. It was a live Video. Yeah, you're right. It yeah. was live. It was on, on Twitter. It's on Twitter. Yeah. Back, like it was like the rudimentary live. Right. Like back when that first on started Twitter. on Twitter. And I, we, um, me couldn't get a haircut. The kids, it was getting out of hand. Uh, cut my hair yep. using a beard trimmer. A beard trimmer. That's it right. We not, didn't have any actual Did not hair have clippers. the right equipment. No. So, but anyway. Uh, it wasn't a great haircut. It, it was bad. That's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's grown back since. That was the first time, uh, Mary says, I, that was the first time I think I laughed during the most awful, stressful mm. time. Oh, that's nice. Um, and have been following since. I was wondering, I was someone wondering where you were when you had your cardiac arrest. Oh, like you got quiet on Twitter. And so oh, during yeah, those right. few days, and so she and was, was wondering what was it happened. was blown away by the story. Listening today, I had to take several breaks listening to your story from Kristen and the paramedics point of view. Yeah, we mm, In our yeah. Lieutenant Greg episode. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I found myself crying at the horror of what happens daily in our world and of this uh, most personal story. I couldn't imagine being Kristen doing CPR on her husband. And seeing those uh, awful colors that people turn when they're coding. Yes. Saying I'm glad everything turned out well sounds trite, but know that I am sincere and beyond relieved at this outcome. Thank you for sharing this story on the podcast and all the speaking you do. You will always have me as a fan. Oh, well, thank you, Mary. That was so nice. Thank you, Mary. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all this one right here. She's, she's um, incredible. So uh, once again, thank you for saving my life. Oh, well, you're welcome. Yeah. You'll be paying Appreciate me that. back until the day you <laughs> die for real. Send us your notes, stories, whatever you want to send us at knockknockhigh at human-content.com. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And let us know if you have any uh, recommendations for guests that you'd like to come on. It's like we'd love to hear all the feedback telling all the hundreds of people saying get Sawbones on. <laughs> yes. We listen to you guys. We do. We um, hope it lived up to your expectations. I hope people like they the were limericks. Incredible. The limericks yeah, are those fun. are fun. Are you like fun? limericks. Like, where, where ah, does that come from? My Irish background. I guess so. Of course. I mean, it's not that I don't. It's just the amount 
of enthusiasm that you have for limericks is notable. That's right. Well, you give us your feedback. You can email us, knockknockhigh at human-content.com. You can visit us on all the social media platforms. Hang out with us and the Human Content Podcast family on Instagram and TikTok at Human Content Pods. I guess that's a family we make content with, right? That's oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Uh, thanks to all the listeners leaving wonderful feedback and reviews. We love those reviews. If you subscribe and comment on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out. Like at Selkies are people too. On Apple now said that's a stance. <laughs> the Glock and Fleckens are such an inspiration and have brought me and my coworkers so much joy. Shout out to the YouTube series as well. As an ex Jonathan who is considering going into medicine but is simultaneously disgusted by the depravity of the US health system in quotation marks. It is so great to hear your shows and know that some doctors are fed up as well and brave enough to talk about it. Yes, we are all fed up. Yeah. The guests on the show have been awesome. Big uh, fan of the game segments too. Yeah, we uh, we got away from those for a few weeks. I think we're back. Yeah. We're back. We, we try. We try to fit, the, fit in the game with all the episodes if we can. Also, I just listened to the Cardiac Rest episode and Lady Glock is like, an absolute legend for doing chest compressions for 10 minutes straight. Definitely. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. Love from the East Coast. Also, Dr. G, did you, did you when you died, did you see anything? I do get asked that question a you lot. You do, yeah. I did not. I just went to bed and I woke up in the hospital. Did you know? I had no out-of-body experience. I was not uh, seeing myself from above or below. I kind of was, though, which I think is interesting. I had kind of an out-of-body experience. We'll have to unpack that in a different episode. Yeah. Uh, but no, I did but not. Did you know there's some research now, I think, a paper came out that, um, okay, don't quote me on this. and Please go look it up. For the real information but um some people when they have a cardiac arrest they do have a memory for like oh a, a little bit oh, at, yeah. the, at the beginning you yeah know? I, i've talked we've talked to people some yeah survivors but different... like now there's like some research happening oh, about any... like what what is it that's oh, going on there biologically oh. and yeah apparently it's a thing uh, but full... you were asleep anyway I like was, when it uh, happened yeah that's so. right so i yeah that's the thing i, I think yeah you know, because i was already sleeping you know, you know, I wasn't dreaming or anything, but you know. um, let's see. Full video episodes are up uh, every week on YouTube at D Glock and Flecken. We also have a Patreon. Lots of cool perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies. Going to come hang out with us and other members of the community. Uh, early ad free episode access, interactive Q&A, live stream events, and much more. Uh, Patreon.com slash Glock and Flecken or go to Glock and Speaking of Patreon, community perks. New member shout out. Angel Villa, Villa, Angel Velt. I don't know how to say that name. <laughs> Tell you what, a Angel Villa? Would you say Angel Villa? I don't know. All right, I've I'm never gonna, seen gonna, this one before. It's very unique. We're gonna we're gonna find out how to pronounce it. We're gonna we're gonna uh, let us know, please. We we love I because we're gonna be saying your name uh, periodically. I don't want to get it wrong. So yeah. So let's help us out a little bit. Uh, so we'll we'll go with Angel Villa. I'm sorry if we got that wrong. Uh, shout out to all the Jonathans, as always. Patrick, Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, K, L, Keith G, J, J, H, Derek N, Mary H, Susanna F, Mohammed K, Aviga, Parker, Ryan, Medical Meg, Bubbly Salt, and Pink, Pink Macho. A virtual head nod to you all. Patreon roulette, random shout out to someone on the emergency medicine tier. Tracy P, thank you for being a patron. Thanks, Tracy. Tracy. And thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Krista Planner, also known as the Glock and Fleck. And special thanks to our guests, Dr. Sydney and Justin McElroy. Our executive producers are Will Planner, Krista Planner, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brooke. Our editor and engineer is Jason Portiz. Our music is by Omer Benz V. To learn about our Night Night High Sparkum, disclaim another policy submission, very case license terms, they have a release terms. Go to glockandfleckin.com or reach out to us at knockknockhigh at human content.com with any questions, concerns, or limericks. I want to hear all the limericks. You know, you do that as though you're like an auctioneer. I think maybe next time you should try doing it as like you're, you're like a soothing, no. meditative. No, I want I want it to be, to be abrasive. You want it to be done as quickly as angry. possible. <laughs> Knock Knock High is a human content production. Knock Knock, goodbye. Hey, Kristen. What? You know what people ask me about? How tall you are. Uh, no, sometimes. But no, they ask me about Jonathan. Mm, yes, I have heard people Everybody ask you about that. Everybody wants a Jonathan. They like, do. is Jonathan real? Can I have your Jonathan? I'm like, no, you can't have my Jonathan. But you know what they can have? What's that? 
Dax Copilot. Ah, yes, yes. And that is basically a Jonathan. It, it is like having a little Jonathan there. It's yeah. it's a, a, an, an AI powered ambient technology. It sits in the room with you and it, it helps uh, create that clinical documentation right. while also allowing you to create a patient physician relationship that we all got into medicine to, to have. We all want that. That's right. Nobody got in to start writing notes. That's right. And it is right now, everyone feels overwhelmed and burdened by all this clinical documentation uh, to where work life balance, it just seems unattainable. Right. So, to learn more about the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience or DAX Copilot, visit nuance.com slash discover DAX. That's N U A N C E dot com slash discover D A X. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.